Hello everyone, in this video I'll talk about linear independence. So, we say two vectors are linearly independent if they are in parallel. Well, what about three vectors? Let's say v, u, and w. What do we mean by either they are or are not linearly independent? Well, recall that given a set of vectors, their linear combination is just their weighted sum. And they are linearly independent if the only solution to this equation is that c1 to cn are all zeros. If we can find some c1 to cn such that they are not all zeros, then that means they are linearly dependent. Heuristically, you can think of this as if you can write one of the vectors in this set, let's say v3, as a linear combination of the remaining vectors, just something like this, then they are a dependent set. So back to just any old two-dimensional vectors. Well, certainly this set cannot be linearly independent because two non-parallel vectors on a plane will span the entire plane. So therefore, it would be possible to write, let's say, w as a linear combination of v and u and any other combinations of the two to the third one. So they would be linearly dependent, linearly dependent. So to check if a given set of vectors is linearly independent, well, we just follow the definition. We write down the linear combination of the given vectors and set it equal to a homogeneous problem. That means set this equal to zero. If the only solution is x1, x2, x3, then it means that the vectors are linearly independent. And in order to solve this, we convert it to its augmented form, something like this, and we row reduce. So let's take negative two times the first row and add it to the second, and negative three times the first row and add it into the third. The point is we want to get rid of these two entries first in our row reduction. By the way, I don't know if this is much of a shortcut, but when you're row reducing in this step, you know that nothing is going to change in the first row, so you just copy that thing down. You know that these two, what we're doing is multiplying by the factor so that these will be zero, so these will be zero without even thinking about anything. So the first step could be this. And now, if you point at it, then the next two rows will magically appear. Next we want to get rid of this entry. So we'll multiply the second row by two, by negative two, and add it in to get something like this. Now this is an echelon form, so we can locate our pivots, the non-zero leading entries, and we notice that every column is a pivot column. So there are no free variables, so there must be one unique solution. And the one unique solution to the homogeneous problem is the solution 0, 0, 0. And so the vectors must be linearly independent. Let's change the problem slightly. Now let's do this example. Same v1 and v2, and now this v3. So in order to check if these vectors are linearly independent, we must check if the only solution to the linear combination equaling 0 is just a 0 vector. So more or less the same logic leads us to solving this augmented matrix. So let's row reduce. The first step is the same. We want to get rid of these two entries, make them zero. After row reduction, we'll get something like this. Now we can do two times the second row. We can do negative two times the second row and add into the third. But this time, notice that we get something like this. So now this is an echelon form, and our pivots are the non-zero leading entries to each row, and our pivot columns are these two columns because it contains the pivot entries. So x1 and x2 are your basic variables, and x3 is a free variable, which means that for different values of the free variable, we will have a different solution. So we will have infinite many solutions besides just 0, 0, 0. So we know that they are not linearly independent or linearly dependent. Just to finish off the problem, we can make this into row reduce echelon form. 
So in the next step, we will divide by negative 3, multiplying row 2 by negative 4 and adding it into row 1 so that we get this. And this is in row reduced echelon form. If we write out the solution, we have that x1 equals x3, x2 equals minus 2 x3, and x3 is just x3 because it's the free variable. In vector form, we have something like this. So setting x3 to be 1 will give us the solution, 1, negative 2, 1. So this linear combination will make this equal to 0.